Are you working 60, 80, 100 hours a week? Are you burnt out? Are you getting fed up with your business? And is your home or home life or relationship really beginning to struggle? Hey, if this sounds like you and you're working countless hours, you're getting burnt out, frustrated, just want to hide and run away from your business, you're not alone. This is a common entrepreneurial thing. Let's talk about this today. But before we do, just do me a favor and hit that subscribe button below the video because every week I've got more videos like this going to help you overcome small business challenges and grow a more successful business. Hey, I'm Cable. I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. I was based in the fitness industry. I owned a whole bunch of gyms and you know, I've been the ups, downs and experienced probably everything you're going through twice. And I think as entrepreneurs, we're just wired weird. So when we talk about work-life balance, well, I don't think that we can really achieve total work-life balance. It's just not in our personality. We're typically driven, we're achievement driven, we're constantly striving for success, and we typically like what we do. So it's not unusual to work a lot. But you might find yourself in situations where you realize, hey, I'm working all of these hours and what am I getting for it? Sometimes it's hard to justify the hours that are spent and you lose sight of why you decided to work so hard in the first place, which was to have more time, money, and freedom to pursue other things that you love. Even worse, if you're married or in a relationship, these things can really start to struggle. I mean, let's be honest. If you've been an entrepreneur for any length of time, you probably face that pressure in your home life that has led to uncomfortable situations with the people that you care about most. So let's try to address that a little bit today. So here's, I'm gonna lay out some strategies for you that I think are really key to achieving a better work-life balance, improving your productivity, eliminating or reducing the chance of burnout, and making you love your business even more. So first things first is, it starts with the end of your work day, okay? So at the end of each work day, there are uh, two tasks that I need you to start doing today and make a habit uh, every single day. So the first thing is celebrate. And what I mean by that is the second last thing before you end your work day should always be taking 30 seconds to two minutes just to go through a summary of the day. What was the highlights of today? What were the wins? What were the victories? Even on the bad days or the frustrating days, they wear you down the most. There was always something to reflect on and be happiest. This is really important to set our mind into a positive state so our subconscious mind will go to work for us overnight, solving all the world's problems, making it easier for us to accomplish and hit the ground running tomorrow. Now, if that sounds like hokey pokey or crazy weird stuff to you, uh, make sure you check out a couple of good books like The Power of the Subconscious Mind or Psycho-Cybernetics by uh, Maxwell Maltz, I believe. Really powerful books to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind. So for now, just take my word for it. 30 seconds to two minutes before you end your work day, celebrate. Reflect, write down what was the biggest positive, what was the biggest win today, or shoot for three wins if you can. The second thing is tomorrow's tasks, okay? So not everything can be a priority. So we have to really narrow our focus. And if you're like anybody else on this planet, you've got this extra long to-do list that is never getting shorter, only getting longer. That's not a bad thing. In fact, I'd say it's a good thing because if that to-do list is getting super short or there's nothing on it at all, chances are you are about to go out of business or you're stagnant, you're not growing, nothing exciting is happening in your business. So good things will always mean lots of tasks. But that can really be one of the things that burns you out, leads to procrastination and overwhelm. So we're going to limit tomorrow's tasks to three key things. The end of each workday, you go to that big to-do list. Okay, You go through the list quickly and aim for your top three tasks, which you're going to transfer to a small piece of paper about that size. This is really key because it isolates you from that overwhelm. Okay, And it's very easy to make a decision and start working on one of these tasks when you have time. Because I know you get pulled in a thousand directions each day. So this is really, really key. So end of work day habit. That's the first and most important thing that I can bestow upon you right now. Celebrate and set up those tasks. Next is number two, which is defined work hours. Okay, now I know the tendency is to work all the time. It's to work seven days a week. It's to never take days off. I know you're just like me. You can't shut your brain off. You're always thinking about work. You're always thinking about business. But for the sanity of everybody else around you and to protect yourself and make you happier and live a more fulfilling life and here's the kicker, be more productive still, set defined work hours. The point is our brain works best with a deadline, okay? So when we set and adhere to a deadline, your brain or subconscious mind will again go to work to try to find a way to make sure that we can meet that deadline. But this only works if you commit to it. So if you set these work hours, you can't break them. 
Okay, there'll be days, yep, just like anyone else, you've got to work late or the clock is five minutes past or whatever, but the point is, is you have to do your best to really adhere to a strict deadline. So whatever those hours are, are need to be. You know, today, if you're in the early stages, they might be long days. It could be 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. at night. Okay, now this is obviously not a good situation for long-term survival, but my point is if that's what we need to set today, the point is is start setting that deadline. So no hell or high water, unless the building is on fire, at nine o'clock you are shutting it down. Okay, and it's good to even set a goal and a target for what do you want your work hours to be. You know, presently my work hours are 10 till 4.30 each day, Monday through Friday, and Friday's afternoons are flexible. Why is it that way? Well, my son is two and a half. My biggest priority right now is to spend these early years with my son and being able to be as part of as much as possible. So I keep my work hours very short. But guess what? You know, I get more done in this time than I probably did back in the days when I was working this because my, my mind is conditioned to prioritize and go to work and focus and make use of the time that I have. So deadlines are really, really important. Don't believe me? Just try it. Try it for seven days and come back and comment on this video and be oh, totally honest with yourself if by having that deadline makes you feel better, makes you a little happier, leaves you a little bit more energized and makes you more productive in just the next few days. What is the next thing? The next thing is uh, something I learned from Dan Sullivan. So I hope he doesn't mind me teaching this. This was something that I found super valuable when I was a pound, uh, part of Strategic Coach and he talks about his time management system in terms of focus, uh, free and prep and I don't think specifically in that order but it doesn't matter we'll kind of go through it and we're actually going to start with prep essentially these are the three types of time blocks that you want to get used to scheduling and maybe we should actually start with free because I think it's the most important one the reason you're in business is to serve the world and help people, but you're also selfishly in business to help yourself and help your family and give yourself the time, money, and freedom to do and explore more things that you love. That's the only way to look at it, I think. And, and here's the interesting thing. When you do the things you love, you are typically more inspired to do the, to, to do the work. Perfect example, I love racing, okay? I love autocross, I love kart racing. It was an autocross last night, which is really great setup for making this video today because I'm super enthusiastic about working today because I had so much fun in my car last night. So this is why free days are so important. Doesn't matter how busy you are, what state your business in, go to your calendar right now and start to schedule some free days or free time blocks. I don't care if it's an hour, an hour to sit down and read a book that you want to read. It might be a business book, it might not be. Something that you simply want to do because it makes you feel good personally and gets those endorphins going. A workout, you know, whatever it needs to be, uh, set that time apart that is specifically for you doing something you love that is not work related. The second thing is prep. And I think this is really important in today's world, okay? Everything is rush, 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 get things done, which is part of the reason we see quality of work going downhill. And, you know, I would say businesses are failing because the level of service and level of quality is not what it used to be because nobody takes the time to slow down and prepare. Right, But it's amazing what happens when you do. Just take a few minutes to think things through, make a few bullet points on how you're going to execute. The execution actually becomes easier, faster, and you'll produce something better at the end. You know, these videos for me, I always kind of the day before I film, I'll make some notes, I kind of go through the topic, I'll start to rehearse, I might even try to get in the camera, knowing in front of the camera, knowing I won't use that video because I want to be more prepared when I speak on the video the next day. So take the time to prepare, put these in your schedule ahead of time. So these tasks might simply be in this order, you know, today is the prep for the tasks for tomorrow. This task may not change for a couple of days and there's nothing wrong with that. Just execute accordingly. The the focus time obviously is the execution time. If we've done the preparation, this will get faster. Now I know you get pulled in a thousand directions, but you may, and even if you can't schedule huge blocks of time today, I promise you that you can simply, uh, when you choose your tasks today, it might be those tasks will survive the next two days. So tomorrow is a prep day, meaning that in amidst the chaos, anytime you do actually get to work on these, is about taking the time to find the resources, do the research, whatever it is that you need to do to execute uh, more effectively. Fourth and finally is the last thing for me, which has been really, really important, which is using journaling to harness and kind of 
uh, exercise the mind. So most entrepreneurs, I think if we're being honest, terrible sleepers, usually up too late. Uh, it's hard to shut your brain down at night. So it's really, really important to do a brain dump. You know, I love my iPad these days, my Apple Pencil, but just take two to five minutes before you go to sleep to just dump everything out of your mind. But here's the secret that has really helped me, okay? Sometimes, especially if you've had a really challenging day, what comes out can be very negative, okay, or very blah. But what I found really empowering and really helpful is to dump it out and then go back through it and cross out negative or non-concrete words. You know, you find yourself ranting and complaining, cross out a sentence and then summarize what was positive about it. Uh, I find that as human nature is to leave ourselves an out, okay, and use very vague language. I should get around to this. I might do this. I was thinking about this. Cross some of those things out, use more concrete language. Instead of, I think, I will. Instead of getting around to this, I'll have this done by Friday. Use that concrete language in your journaling will help prepare your mind to go to work to solve those tasks uh, that you set at the end of your workday as you sleep that will allow you to hit the ground running tomorrow. Guys, this is my little thing on work-life balance. The two key things I can't stress enough are setting these defined work hours and then scheduling these three blocks of time where possible. This one being the most important. I don't care how busy you are, what stage in your business, you can go to your calendar right now and schedule one hours or one day, uh, once a week or even a month. The point is it gives you a target to strive for. This is my reward. This is what I'm working towards is that time for myself, which I promise will invigorate you for your business. Hey, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for joining me this week. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button below the video. Check in with me each week. I've got some really cool stuff lined up for you guys and I just wanna help you be more successful. If you got questions, please ask. I wanna help. Take care, I'm out of here.